In this video, I want to show how you can create your own website on the dark web, in the Tor hidden services, and how you can create your own vanity URL so the onion address starts with whatever string you might like. The best part is, this is super easy to do. So first things first, I'm going to create just a temporary server, some throwaway instance out in the cloud on DigitalOcean here, and I guess we can just put this box over in London. Uh, all the defaults are really fine for me, Ubuntu with the latest version is just fine, it's just going to host a simple HTTP server. I'm fine with whatever cost. This is just a temporary thing. And for the sake of convenience, we can just use a regular old password to log into this droplet. I'll go ahead and create one here for us. And with that, we can just set the name of this to like, I don't know, temp tour, right? Just a temporary tour service. And we'll go ahead and click create droplet. Okay, now our temp tour instance is being created. We should have an IP address soon and we can go work with the server. But while that is booting up, I want to show you like the documentation for this already exists. Like this is pretty easy to find. It's literally on Tor's website. Here's the guide on how to set up your own Onion service. All you need is to get Tor running, spin up a web server, whether it's Apache, Nginx, whatever you want, and then just configure stuff. So this should be really easy to do. Back on DigitalOcean, we can see that our droplet has been created and we have an IP address. We can go ahead and SSH into that now. So I'll be working in Kali Linux just because it's easy. Hey, it's got everything already pre-installed and configured here for me. So what I'll do is just simply SSH to root at that IP address and we can go ahead and accept the keys and log in with our password that we just set. Okay, now we should be logged in into our temporary server. And here's the thing, we can spin up just a super simple, super easy little web service if we just make a directory for like dub dub dub. If I move into that directory, maybe we can use nano or vim or vi or whatever text editor you want. Let's just create a simple index.html. I'll go ahead and cruise through just the usual whatever boilerplate stuff to spin up a HTTP and little HTML file here. And that's basically the skeleton, all that we need to create our server. I hit control O on my keyboard to save that file and then control X to get out of it. Now we could super easy just spin this up with like Python. Like you don't even need to install Apache Nginx if you don't want to. Look, again, just for the sake of showcase, let's do this quick and easy. Let's use an HTTP server over on port 80. You will specify that with TAC M when you invoke Python and then the port that we want, then we'll go ahead and spin it up. Now it's listening on port 80, so I could go to this IP address in my web browser and see it in action. Let's just open up Firefox and I'll go to that URL, really just the IP address here. But obviously this is on the clear net, right? This is just on the open internet. We haven't set up any domain or any V3 onion address and we don't even have HTTPS. We don't have any SSL or TLS certificates to keep this thing secure. It's just plain text HTTP. But honestly, that is okay. Just for the sake of our showcase, let's go ahead and open up another little connection over to our droplet and let's log back in so that we can now set up the Tor hidden service. We'll get logged back in here and then we need to install everything that is outlined in that documentation. Back over here on the Tor guide, literally just, hey, how to set up Tor, we can just follow the Tor installation guide. They have a link here for us, how to install Tor. And then we just need the root privileges that we already have. If we're working on a Mac, you can use a package manager. If we're working in Debian and Ubuntu, which we are, we could just simply, hey, apt install Tor. It's just that easy. Easy. Let's get back into our command line and then just paste in that apt install tour and fire it up. We can hit yes and enter Y to accept that and we'll just install all the stuff that we might need. And now tour is set up and installed. In fact, it's probably already running as a service. We could actually check out, hey, service tour status and we'll see here tour is loaded and active it's doing its thing now we've basically done step zero and we've also basically done step one which is a super simple python service so we could just move on to step two which is just configuring your tour onion service all you need to do is add the following two lines to your tour rc file or the configuration file that helps start up tour and hey by the way the whole reason we might be doing this like setting up our own hidden dark web tour hidden services website could be for whatever reason you want. Maybe it's privacy, maybe it's anonymity. You probably want to, hey, maybe configure or tweak or harden a little bit of the server in a way so that it isn't as easily fingerprinted when other folks are trying to go see what is this server made up of, where is it, how is it hold it, etc. That is the benefit of the dark web, right? I mean, I know it's a kind of a cheesy name, it's the Tor Hidden Services, but look, 
you need to know the address, so you need to know where you're going in order to get there. Now, I've showcased a whole lot of recent videos where I'm using Flare to actually look through the dark web and try to see, hey, what is my information risk? Like, what info is already out there in the places that I can't just as easily track? That's been really, really cool because we got to dig into really anything that we might want, like, oh, new ransomware leaks, or I don't know, shady telegram chats, or just my own information, maybe just stuff about me, or my company, or my business, right? Anything that you find the use for, you can basically use this for threat intelligence across the dark web. However, it's only doing that through its collectors. There are so many of these, but it needs to have things automatically added. So I gotta say, look, Flare isn't gonna track this temporary throwaway Tor dark web website that we create. Anyway, let's get back to setting up our domain. And again, if you wanted to create a vanity URL, this is stuff that's information. There are resources already out there that tell you exactly how to do this. And look, none of this is my own creation. Credit where credit is due. I think this is Ben Tasker. And he has this whole write up on how you can easily generate a vanity address for version three onions. And that's what we're using right now, right? Hey, we've moved on in the new era, the modern age. Now, I'm not sure if you know, but the V3 onion address addresses are longer. There's significantly more characters and more randomness in the URL. It uses some different encryption scheme, schemata, something, some way. Uh, in which case, we need to use a little bit of a different tool than you would have been able to use with V2 addresses. So we do need to install some dependencies, but they give us all this super duper easy. Again, copy and paste. We'll get back to our Kali Linux virtual machine where we have an SSH connection into our droplet and let's app get install, just paste in all this stuff. And again, Y hit yes, enter, and we can install it all. Now the tool that we can use to actually create our own vanity address is called MP2240. It's the workhorse that'll be doing the backbreaking work of trying to generate these key combinations. These are the things that are necessary for a Tor hidden service to be, hey, tucked away and hidden, given a sort of crypto portion stuff. I'm not gonna pretend like I know all of it because I don't, but if anything, look, it'll spin up uh, whatever URL we want. Get back into our terminal and once again, hey, slap this all in place. It'll clone the repository, it'll compile everything that we need and fingers crossed, we'll be good to go. I'll hit LS here to see. Now we have a new binary MKP2240. Now this is super duper easy. You just run the binary, you can specify a filter as to how you want your onion address to start and and then I believe these other arguments, they define them below, are threads, verbose mode, different suggestions that you want to be able to have offered to you, and then where it'll write the output and the keys that are necessary for us to put into our Tor RC configuration file that you saw referenced just in the Tor guide. So let's try it out. Let's get back to our terminal and let's use the dot slash MKP2240 whatever. Let's set a filter on whatever we'd like. We can call this, I don't know, subscribe. Maybe that's short enough for it to be able to find different things things. Uh, we'll go ahead and say we want those four threads, verbose mode. We can decide how many suggestions we want. Let's try to see if we can generate like three of them. I don't care. And then we can just specify our destination directory. Let's just slap it into temp just as it had previously. So it goes ahead and sets this up using the directory that we specified, using the filter on subscribe is what we're going to be looking for. And this will take a little bit of time because it's going to have to be crunching numbers, trying to figure out, hey, what key pairs actually match up for us to get the key subscribe at the very, very front of the onion address. And Ben Tasker's article, like this blog and write-up does acknowledge this, by the way. It says, look, this gets progressively harder to do and actually find and brute force the keys, the more characters that you specify or the longer that you want your vanity URL to start with, right? A little bit of a good joke here. I don't know what resources Facebook core dub 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 I dot whatever took. Oh, wait a second. It generated one onion address uh, for filter. I guess filter was literally in Included like as a word to be used in these options here. Isn't that what they did in the write-up? Yeah, okay. Looks like it just passed it in and it was included in there and also searched for that. So <laughs> now we know. Okay, it's genuinely looking for filter and then probably this is like alphabetically sorted. So Ben went first for them, uh, but subscribe is still, uh, maybe lesser on the list. Dang, it turned out another one, but honestly, let me try to recreate this with uh, just subscribe is the only option. All right, it found one. So uh, just for the sake of time, I shortened that to like sub to JH because whatever, the nine characters of subscribe, you know, differed from the filter, whatever, maybe six or seven if we did filters, uh, doesn't matter. Look, looks like we got sub to J-H-E-R-O all of this. Kind of looks like sub to J-Hero, but whatever, we're good with it. Let's go ahead and maybe leave this thing running in case it gets so many other cool ones. Uh, but in another terminal way down here below, uh, I started to take a look Oh, cool. 
Sub to JH me? Uh, I don't know. I kind of like that one too. We can go take a look at these because inside of the temporary directory, just where we suggested it, look, this is where we want our destination output to be. We have all of these onion sites that the folders and the keys that are created based off the filters that we were looking at. So here's our sub to JH me. Let's go see if we can go play with that. I'll copy and paste this one and I'll move into that directory and you can see Hey, these are the files that will be necessary for our Tor config. Let's go ahead and create this and spin up the Tor RC file, just like we read about in that other article. The Tor guide suggests putting all of these files in some other directory, like var lib Tor, and then whatever you want to call your hidden service directory, just a name for it. So we can go ahead and create that back in our instance. Let's try to change directory over to that var lib Tor folder, and we can go ahead and check out, look, let's make make directory for our uh, JH or sub to JH, right? Let's create that. And then let's move everything from the temporary directory for that sub to JH me folder asterisk to grab all the files and let's go bring them into this current directory with the period. Now if I take a look at the files in this directory, we have everything that we just saw a moment ago and this should be all that we need to tell Tor RC, our configuration file, this is where we want to be hosting our site. Thankfully we just say, look, use this directory and then use this port 80 based off of it listening port 80 on localhost. So let's grab this and go modify our Tor RC that should be in just etc Tor. Let's nano forward slash etc tor tor rc i'll hit enter on that and then there should actually already be some stuff in here for hidden directory let me search with control w i think it's hidden oh no hidden service right there we go it already has some stuff commented ready for us we can go ahead and use this and let's just modify this to our sub to jh path of course you can call this whatever you want i'm just sort of hey playing with the meme here we'll save this file we can close out of that and note at the very top our terminal over here was actually trying to work with this on all ports or all uh sorry interfaces 0.0.0.0, .0 is where it bound to let me see if i can change that to just simply localhost so hey uh, Tor will do whatever it needs to do here. Is that tack B? Is that how that's done? Looks like address can be specified like that. I'll hit enter and there we go. Now it's only local. But Tor should be able to serve that theoretically. So let's try our darndest to service Tor status. We can see down below that Tor is still running, but let's try to stop and start it or just simply restart it and see if there are any issues. Let's take a look at the status one more time and it looks like it's good. It looks like it's running. So that Tor configuration was is all set for us. Let's go see if we can actually access our V3 Onion address over on Tor. Here I've got Hunix up and running just in its own virtual machine. Let's see if we can fire up the Tor browser. All right, and bear in mind that we are still not using HTTPS. We are only strictly on HTTP. So let's see, uh, hopefully it doesn't force a redirect, but fingers crossed, if I hit enter on this, will it take me there? Oh, page is loading. Uh Onion site not found. Well, hey, you know what? Maybe we can let Tor generate what it needs to start rather than, hey, maybe having this directory already stated here for us. That can be a little bit of a tiptoe tap dancing, just some troubleshooting on the fly. But if I hop back over to that directory, can I actually move my sub to JH to like an old sub to JH? That works just fine. So all of those still exist. On, we have those files here. Let's try and restart Tor one more time. Let's see if it creates the directory for us. I'll hit LS one more time. And there it is, it has created a new one. So let me go see what's actually in this directory. It creates hostname, HS, and all this stuff, but also has some authorized clients folder. So maybe that is a fine necessity. Uh, and let's try to just move or copy over our old sub to JH stuff into this directory. How about that? Let's restart Tor yet again, and let's make sure that our service is up and running with Python firing it up. Here we go, HTTP server. And you know what? Let's use that localhost address again, because I feel like that should be right. Taking a look at the status of Tor, there are no issues. It looks all good. Can the Tor browser see it? Let's go ahead and get back to this HTTP colon slash slash yet again. Oh, there it is, kind of. Uh, 
wait a second, oh, that's totally right, because we're just using a simple HTTP server, and we need to be back in our host directory where we had our index.html. Let's go fix that. Let me just bounce back to our home directory in our dub 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 folder, and now let's run our Python server yet again. Let's refresh with another HTTP, and here it is, our website on Tor Hidden Services, the dark web, spooky wooky, uh, <laughs> with HTTP and a stupid Python simple HTTP server. But our own vanity URL. I don't know about you, but I think that's kind of neat. Obviously, look, we can decorate this, make this whatever we wanted to, but the proof of concept is just kind of neat. Now again, Flare's not gonna see this, right? It's not added to any of its collections. It's just kind of a simple thing that's, it's not tracking and it has to be set on its own. So let's, look, I could try to look for my dark web website or just like, please subscribe. That would be a funny one. Are there any entries for please subscribe across the dark web? <laughs> oh yeah, a couple of uh, little group bots messaging on Telegram, please subscribe. <laughs> Man, group help is going off on this. Group help official clone bot. Group help, please subscribe. Great, now I've put myself in with the cool group bot. But hey, that's it. Super duper easy. Hey, maybe installing the Tor service. Hey, maybe cranking out a domain if you really wanted that vanity URL. Otherwise, Tor will just spin it up and create it for you. And then look, you just get the server running and you're good. Now, obviously, again, I haven't showcased, oh, setting up an HTTPS certificate. I didn't showcase, hey, maybe tweaking, configuring some of the settings to say, look, uh, try to mask the server type or version, etc. The Tor guide even suggests maybe creating a Unix socket rather than, hey, actually the port that you just happened to listen on. There are plenty of other tricks you can do, but I just wanted to kind of dip your toes in the water and show you like, hey, this is a pretty fun and easy thing to dive into. With that said, Flare did sponsor this video and they have always been an incredible support of the channel and all that we're up to. So please, if you could, hey, take a look at what they're up to. They're doing some incredible stuff with the cyber threat exposure management platform and solution so that you can see, hey, what information is out there. Give them a try, link below in the video description. Thank you so much for watching. And hey, if you create your own little dark web website on the Tor Hidden Services, you slap together your own vanity URL. Hey, send it along. Sure. I'd love to see. Maybe we can take a look. Maybe that'd be kind of neat. Thanks again. I'll see you in the next video.